How's it going guys? We're back with another review. So today I've got for you this old um, GHC is the manufacturer. It's an old 040 Camelback engine with a tender. So this one was probably made in the 1950s or 60s in Japan by the GHC HO Train Company in for Philadelphia. And it's just an old 040 Camelback, not very detailed, but it's an old all-metal cast um, cast engine, the tender, and the engine are all metal. There is no plastic other than the um, other than the couplers, and a lot of it is brass. Most of the parts for it are brass, as you can see. The drive rods are not very detailed, and neither is the. Um, cab area. I got my pointer out so I can show you things a little bit more easily, but as you can see on here, all the details, there's handrails right here, they're brass, um, the cab and roof with the uh, pipework going to the uh, actual cab, they're all brass, the domes, the bell, the funnel, and a lot of the little details such as the uh, pipework and stuff here, it's all brass. Same with the one on the tender. There's not as much brass on the uh, tender because most of the parts are cast onto the metal or cast onto the uh, actual tender piece. But as you can see, there's a lot of rivet detailing on the tender. Not really on the engine. There is no rivet detailing other than on the front. As you can see on the smoke box door, there is some detailing. This one does not have a light, but it does have a hole in the, um, in the top where you could fit a light or the wires for it, and then in the back of the uh, lantern box, you can see there's also an area for a light to go through it. The only way connecting the uh, tender to the engine is a brass screw. That's how I got it, at least. I'm not sure if that's how it would have been originally. And the um, hook for the tender is like a plasticky kind of cardboardish material. I would assume that that's original. But, very heavy tender, it weighs almost more than the engine does. It definitely weighs more than the engine does. Mostly because it's a solid cast piece. No coal detailing, but you can put coal in it since it is a hollowed out area. Metal, um, metal wheels and metal uh, wheel covers. Same, the tender, is in a, the tender is a very short piece, actually, if you put it next to any sort of freight cars. As you can see, this is an old, or this is a new um, Pennsylvania um, covered hopper car. And as you can see how long it is compared to the tender. The tender is shorter than the engine, which is not unusual for most engines, but considering how small that this engine is, it is almost pretty unusual for that. And it's a nice running engine. When I got it, it didn't run because a couple of the wires were disconnected and the motor was extremely dusty like it hadn't been run for a long time. So I had to clean it out, but it runs good. I will also show you the original box. It has a picture of a finished version of the uh, engine on it. The one I have is an unpainted um, unit. This one was a Baltimore and Ohio painted one, but as you can see, pretty basic box. Not too much on it, just um, on the front and on the side. There's no other detailing saying a date or anything. No instructions with this one either. But it's nice to have the at least the original box. So this engine runs about as well as you would expect it to. Um, forward and reverse for this engine. Um, I've got some freight cars set up down there for it. Ones that I think are fitting for this engine, which are some older style um smaller freight cars, but I will turn on the uh, controller and have this engine see if it'll couple up first time to the uh, freight cars. Put it in the right direction. So nope, looks like we'll have to couple it manually. So it's got, it's just got regular horn hook couplers and they couple up normally as you would expect. It's also got one on the front of the engine which is nice if you wanted to pull something in reverse. 
but we'll set it off in the forward direction. Pretty good low speed on it. I say it as it stops. That's about a good speed for it. That's about half throttle on the controller. It's a little bit of a noisier engine, but most of the engines from this era are pretty noisy. So I think that's going to be about it for this engine. There really wasn't too much to show on it other than um, some of the uh, more historical aspects of it since it's a more basic engine compared to a lot of the newer engines and even some of the bigger engines since it's just a small steam engine. It's a really interesting style though that they made. I'm surprised that they had the ones that had the cab in the center. Not really sure why they did that but probably helped with something I would assume. But I really like this engine. It's one of the coolest ones that I've got. Any of the older engines I really like. That's trying. That's what I try to collect a little bit more of. I've only got a few of the all-metal engines like that. Mark's one that I, re that I reviewed a little while ago, and same with this one. And most of the Mantua engines are also all-metal. But I think that's going to be it for this review. And uh, thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya.